So I'm just gonna preface this video right here with something because I would made a really, really, really dumb mistake. So first off, I am in the middle of building the Master Grade Virtue and Nadle for an upcoming review and I'm putting a lot of time into that. So in the interim, in order to keep content flowing, I decided to grab for something that I had ready and that was the Gundam Gushian Rebake. But what I did not realize is, at some point in the past I had taken the Rebake Full City and was using it to do a project that is currently on hiatus. And at some point, I stuck the Gushian Rebake Full City's head onto the Gushian Rebake in order to test fit some stuff and all of that, and I forgot to take it off. So I started the whole beginning of this review, not even realizing that I had the Gushian Rebake Full City's head on the Gushian Rebake. I don't even know if I'm saying that right anymore. The Rebake Full City's head was on the Rebake. It's a completely different color as well. I was too busy staring at the Nadle there in the background to actually realize what I was doing. So, there will be scenes in this particular review when the Rebake Full City's head is on the kit because I did not want to reshoot at all because I want to get back to the Nadle. So, apologies on that. Now, here we go. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at this right here because one of you guys told me I've never reviewed it. This is the high grade Gundam Gushian Rebake and when I saw that comment, I immediately thought, I have totally reviewed this, but it turns out I haven't. And if there is any other Iron-Blooded Orphans kit I have not reviewed, let me know. I thought I'd done the next to them all or them all. So if I have forgotten any, drop a comment, let me know. Now let's check this out. So jumping straight away into absolutely everything that comes inside of the box, and I will mention that this I have had since it was released. I got this on the day of release, so I built this a long, long time ago. So if there is a couple of things missing in here, I apologize, but I think I've got pretty much everything. So as for what we do have in here, that is the high-grade Gundam Gushian Rebake itself, we've got the rifle, an alternate head, and Gushian's shield, which also doubles as its butt flap. So let's get right on into talking about the Gushian itself. Ho ho ho, you know if Santa Claus shaved his balls, he'd use Manscaped. The world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. Including the Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer with built-in advanced skin-safe technology. It prevents sink nicks and cuts and has a cool built-in LED light so you can know what you're doing even in the dark. Stuff that stocking with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. For a pair of fresh balls that will last you all Christmas. New to the collection is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, which has 360 degree rotary blades and the same skin safe technology as the trimmer. Honestly, I've got this thing shoved up my nose way more often than necessary, but this thing is awesome. So if you've got someone in your life who needs some manscaping this holiday season, then you can get them the Performance Package by Manscaped. And for a limited time, you'll get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. So you can go to manscaped.com and use my promo code MECCA to get 20% off and free international shipping plus those two free gifts. Link down there in the description. So when it comes to out-of-box high-grade Iron-Blooded Orphans builds, the Gushian Rebake might just be one of the most unfortunate failures out there. And I think that might be why I did avoid doing the review way back when. This thing is an absolute sticker massacre, and when it does come to the nature of Iron-Blooded Orphans high grades, which means they are quite loose out of box. Maybe not straight away, but eventually they get quite loose. I have mentioned this in previous videos. I do highly recommend top coating every individual aspect of the inner frame before even assembling it. That will get rid of pretty much every issue you'll have with floppiness. That has worked for me on multiple kits so far and makes me very happy when it comes to these kits. But when I reach back in time to kits I built out of box the way they came back in 2016 or whatever. Well, at this point, I could tie strings to their wrists and to their ankles and dance them around like floppy little puppets. You need to make sure you tighten these up. Otherwise, you're in for a bad time. But yeah, the Gushian Rebake right here does have a lot going on around back, especially with those arms and heavy equipment, which gives it a lot of issues when it comes to stability. But the biggest issue, of course, is those stickers. So like I mentioned, I did build this kit quite some time ago, so I may not have used all the stickers and may not remember them all, but there's some on the knees. We've got a triangular shaped one on the crotch, so you will be needing some white paint if you are going to paint this. We've got some absolutely gargantuan ones on the shoulder, and there is no 
absolutely zero forgiveness can be given for that absolute mess of stickers on the Gushion's head. I have never, ever, ever seen something quite this bad. Of course, they made the Gushion too goddamn awesome for Bandai to actually pull off in high grade, but that is just woo. This is definitely a kit you're gonna want to paint. We've also got some stickers up there in the backpack as well. There's two heads in here and this one is not as bad because at least the uh, V-fin antenna segments are in orange. But like I mentioned, that is out of box. If you do plan to paint this, then everything you need is here. It does look very, very nice. No matter what way you look at it, the actual silhouette, the detailing, everything looks phenomenal, just like these kits did. Just the technology at the time couldn't do that head, I guess, and Bandai cut a couple of corners. So once again, if you're not painting this kit, it's not going to turn out looking too great. But if you are, of course, you can always salvage it. So once again, jumping back into the overview of absolutely everything that comes in the box, and this is what we get with the high-grade Gundam Gushion Rebake. So the first of the weapons we have in here is this, the 120mm long-range rifle. So this is a modified variant of what we would have seen with the Grays, rocking a scope up top so it has a longer range, but does fire slower than the Grays' rifle. Popping it into the hand is quite simple. You do have to remove the lower segment like this in order to get it in. But once you do, it's as simple as popping it in like that on like so. So somewhat plain in typical Iron-Blooded Orphan style. That is all in that dark, dark gray, but it is nicely detailed and looks pretty cool. So next up in here, we've got the Gushion Shield. You might actually recognize this as the original Gundam Gushion's back. The detail on this is absolutely phenomenal. So if you actually panel line this, it will look incredible. Incredible, but out of the box, it is just cast in the one color on the surface and another color around bottom, which is actually quite good. We've got that little bit of a segment right there for attaching it in order to attach this onto the arm. So using that little segment round back right there, you can actually just attach it into the elbow just like so, where it can function like a shield. Now, I will mention round back, we've got a whole host of individual 3mm holes. So that means you can attach a whole bunch of things onto the back of this or attach the shield on in a whole bunch of different ways, basically just by detaching this little stick segment and attaching it on in different ways, whatever way that you like. So if you want some kind of extendo shield, just like so. But once again, I will mention that these frames are a little weak out of box, so it might have some trouble with it. When this is not in use as a shield, you can just pop it into that hole in the butt flap, and now you've got yourself some super extended butt armor. So we do have an alternate head in here. The head we've seen the whole time is the aiming mode. So I just left this one on just to show just how bad the sticker situation can be. And right now is the point in the review that I realized I had the rebake full city's head on this the whole time. That I was going to go from the long range head mode to the standard head mode. And I was like, where's the standard head? That doesn't look quite right because it isn't quite right. Yes. The Gushion Rebake Full City's head is so much worse than the Gushion Rebake. Man, I'm confusing myself again. Full City, bad head. Rebake, pretty bad head, but not as bad. So there we go. There is the long range sniping mode of the head. It's all closed up and we've got quite the sensor on the front. A lot of stickers, but not as bad as what we saw in the Rebake Full City. And right there, that is the standard version of Gundam Gushion Rebake's head. Again, not so bad. It has a gundam -y vibe, but it is very, very heavy on the stickers. So there we go with a mega zoom in so you can see that absolute mess. Now this has been on there for a while and been packed multiple times, so it's gotten a bit of a beating, but still out of box, even with the deftest hands, this can never look good. We've got stickers all over the place, the chin, the orange part in the muzzle, the eyes, the head camera, around the head camera, on the sides of the head, this is a lost cause. Unless you're painting this kit, you're gonna have some issues. But like I've said multiple times throughout this review, if you are painting the head, that is no problem whatsoever, just there's gonna be a lot of tiny, tiny masking here. So now moving on to the articulation, and as usual, we're going to be going from the head down. The neck is the usual giggity giggity polycap, but I find it quite limited in this kit. There's the head all the way up, all the way down a little bit better, and there's the side to side. Again, a little bit 
on the limited side. The shoulder poly caps are oriented, so they move up and down. So that right there is what we get, so not too bad. Inside of that, then we've got the shoulder roll, and there is the arm raised all the way up. It is worth noting that the arm cannot move independently to the shoulder because the ball joint is the shoulder. The shoulder joint in here can spin around just like so. Full 360 spin at the upper arm. As is usually the case with a Gundam frame, we've only got a single point bend at the elbow, so that is just over 90 degrees. We've got a ball joint for the wrist. These are a little bit on the loose side. They fall off quite easy. Again, usual Gundam frame right here, so we've got a little bit of a crunch. Glue that while you're building it because there are two parts that separate inside, which result in this looseness. Below that then is a ball joint, which will give you this, as well as your full rotation all the way around. As for the skirting armor, it can move up only a little bit. It does get a little bit blocked. You can separate that by snipping those two. Standard side skirt, so it can move up and down, as well as twist to the front and to the back. A lot of stickers on there I didn't mention earlier on. We got a paralyzed butt flap. We've got a simple forward and back mechanism for the hips. High-grade iron-blooded orphans kits have never had much in the lines of kicks, so yeah, that is blocked to the front, very blocked to the back, and as for those splits, well, we can get the full splits. The upper leg can twist like so, but we've got a big lip of armor at the front, which blocks the full spin. A double-jointed bend at the knee that gets us that right there. And when we get that leg on the ground, first off, we do have this little bit of tilting armor right here. It only tilts ever so slightly, but what we get here is that all the way to the front, extremely limited. That all the way to the back, again, extremely limited. And as for the side to side, we've got all the way like that, and the same to the other side. But of course, the crown jewel of the Gushian rebake are these two segments up here. Most of the time, they're just thrusters. They can move in and out, up and down like so, and these thrusters can move out like this. But the coolest aspect has to be the fact that we've got a pair of fold-out arms that just fold out like this, swing out, extend, pull out like that. I'm missing the back of one of them. And these are pretty much a little pair of Gray's arms. They've got rotation like this, one point of a bend right there. The wrist gives us the usual ball joint going on. And honestly, seriously, how cool is a pair of extra sub arms up on the back like that? That is so cool. It'd definitely be a whole lot cooler if he wasn't missing this hand. There we go. As I was saying, that is so cool. So when it comes to the articulation, the high-grade Gushian Rebake is not the craziest kit around. It is very limited in a lot of aspects. But those arms really are its saving grace, the ones up back, because you can turn these around, move them around a lot, to give it a little bit more dynamicness when it's in a pose, just like wings would, but a little bit more because of the articulation we have there. But when it comes to the legs and the lower body, this is extremely, extremely limited. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and it does hurt me to say this because I love the Gushion Rebake to bits, but this is definitely a bronze tier kit through and through. If we go through the list, aesthetically this thing relies very, very heavily on stickers, and out of box it won't look very, very good. I highly recommend painting this kit if you are to get it. Secondly, when it comes to the accessories, these are actually quite good. Definitely the best aspect of the kit, especially if you consider that backpack, a set of accessories because this does have the standard Iron-Blooded Orphans backpack adapter so you can make your own unique forearmed kit with it. Of course, it would have been nice to see the Long Rifle and the Halberd, but those are sold separately. And when it comes to the last aspect, which is the articulation we just looked at, it does drop the ball a little bit in the lower body, but makes up for it with those extra arms. So, again, if you're planning to paint this kit, then it is a winner, and I do recommend it. Extremely unique. But if you're going to build this out of box, it's not going to be the most impressive kit out there, sadly, considering the Gucci on Rebake is just so, so cool. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, I'll throw a link down there in the description. Thanks, as always, to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. And of course, thanks to you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so, so much to each and every one of you guys for watching these videos. Without you, this channel would not be possible. And my special thanks to those helping out over on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. So that includes Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T. Van Fawn, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, and Orgy59061.